Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to Channel Day. Pleasant day here in the central tablelands of New South Wales, Australia. It's roughly 22 degrees. I'm in the running stage on this uh, uh, Classic 350 Reborn Red Chrome. Now what I was going to do was, uh, I noticed when I was out there yesterday, and I thought this may be an interesting clip anyway, is I usually run 10 or 15 kilometre runs, and you uh, find that when you come back you can smell how warm the motor is on these new bikes until they sort of beard or run in. So that's why it's always important to sort of do your running carefully, don't overdo it, and more importantly, don't stress or overheat the motor. So we'll have a look at it here now, and I'll swing the clock, and we'll check a speedo reading. So my speedo reading comes in at 49 0.6 kilometers so I've done 50k so what I'm planning on doing I'm going to take it out and do 15 kilometers and come back so what we're going to do then I've got one of these thermal temperature gauges here so if we fire it on to the spark plug area there now we're getting a temperature of 24C so once down into the barrel area, again 24, and down here in the bottom part of the motor, it's around 23.7 about, you know, they're all on 24 seat. So what I'm going to do, I'll take it out, what I did, we'll do 15 kilometres, come back and check it, and we'll just sit here and we'll just see what the temperature's like. And like I said, each time when you get these end fields and you take them out, and especially when they're new, you'll come back and you'll feel uh, or you'll smell them. The, the motors are really warm in them and it uh, doesn't matter which ones you appear to get. I've noticed on all of them. The only um, ones I don't notice on, for example, if you <laughs> jump on a Vespa scooter or you jump on the Suzuki or the other bikes, the Hondas and stuff like that, they're never like these end feels. For some reason, I don't know why, but the end feels always smell hot when you bring them back more so than other bikes. Now. I don't know whether it's the way they put their or the metals put together or something to that effect, whatever it is, but that's one of the key reasons why you wouldn't want to get out and ride these bikes really hard, long distance, especially from brand new, because later on I'll tell you the story, even with one of these J motors, what can happen to those if you run them along a bit quick. So that's something to sort of come back and listen to and you might learn something from that one. Yeah, so to do this test, I usually with the run in, it'll be 15 kilometres just around town riding. And uh, on these new bikes of Enfield, I usually give it, say, a minute, minute and a half in a minute, just idle away there. And uh, when you first kick it over, you'll find that the bike will run a little bit of a fast idle for about one minute. I usually let it go to the point where it runs at a fast idle for, say, a minute or a little bit longer, and then it'll drop in revs there. You know, a couple hundred revs or something to that effect or you can hear the change in the motor when it does that that's when I get on it and start riding it so like I said I'll do 15 kilometers around town bring a back parker here and we'll just check that uh, engine temperature there on that thermal gauge okay guys we're only about one minute away from the engine temperature test and you'll be able to see what happened on the ride of roughly 15 kilometers but while we're at it uh, for the regulars here um, I just like to ask him for a bit of a favour. So uh, you guys might have noticed that there's been a few short clips coming up now, plus uh, a different sort of a format to the thumbnails. Well, the youngest daughter's been responsible for that one, and uh, at the moment she's got a, her own sort of YouTube channel, and um, she's doing a bit of a makeup course here at the moment on the Halloween on how to dress up like Wednesday Adams, which. I'd have been look at it, it's pretty good. So uh, if you're one of the regulars and you like leaving a comment and, you know, occasionally give me your thumbs up and stuff like that, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it if you swing over to her channel and I'll leave a link in the description and you could just go over there and give it a bit of a boost with a thumbs up and a comment there if you'd like to do that too. I'd greatly appreciate that. So hopefully when I go over and sort of check things out in a day or so, well, you know, I'll be able to look at it and say, oh yeah, they were really cooperative with me on this one. And once again, it doesn't cost you nothing to do it. You know, we just have to go over there and do it. And like I said, I would appreciate that. And I put a lot of effort and cash into this channel to get things going and very rarely ask you for anything. So this is one case where I'd like, you know, if you come to the party, come over there, hit it with a thumbs up and 
I would thoroughly appreciate you doing that because she's helped me out quite a lot with the uh, shorts and the thumbnails. So apart from that, we'll get on the final result here and I'll just show you how hot this motor gets. Here you go, it's so I'm back from the ride. It wasn't a bad ride around town. A little bit warm, a little bit windy. So I've now clocked. Oh yes, I did it roughly almost 19 kilometres. So 19 kilometres around town. So we'll put the temperature gauge on the spark plug area first. So if you look at that, it's sitting at 108 C. Once again, 108 C in the barrel. It's 111. And down here in the bottom part of the motor. Pretty clear at 36. I wonder what the exhaust is sitting at. The exhaust is only sitting on 65. Let me just see if I've got it lined up right. No, 65, 67. Naturally, all the heat is up here around the plug area on the barrel side there, which is around 106 now. Then the guts there, it's also sitting at 106. So just goes to show you, but that's why even at the moment uh, you can smell there's heat to build up on the motor. And naturally, I suppose, because this is an oil cooled only and there's no um, oil circulating around it. So it's got no uh, external cool or anything like that on it, not like. Uh, the Vespa over there, I think it's got, uh, it's water cooled. So as far as that goes, gives you an idea how much these heat up. Now the idea behind this now is like, I probably may not ride this for the rest of the day and might not get on it now till tomorrow. Might actually take the Vespa out and give it a bit of a run later. But it's pretty windy out here today, so there's no big deal whether I ride or not. So that sort of gives you an idea how the heat builds up on these motors up into that temperature and uh, it's fairly windy like uh, even though it's 22 degrees you can see the I don't know if you can see out here on the thing uh, you may be able to see but it's fairly wild windy weather over there like you can see all the trees here moving around so apart from that I think the temperature would be up even a little bit even a little bit higher like uh, if it was sort of a calm day the uh, heat on the cycle of the motor is starting to drop now so even though it's only been there a couple of minutes it's now down to 103 there in the barrel side, 99. So it just gives you an idea. Like if you got out there and kept riding these bikes in the running and never given the cool down period for everything to settle in and all the metal to sort of whatever it does the best, that's where you strike the problems riding these and they just get on a warm day, you're riding them along quicker. And that was only after, say, 19 kilometres of around town riding. No stopping in traffic or something like that moving all the time so if you were there caught at traffic lights and stuff like that which i never hit one around here it might be a totally different ball game and it might be up around 120 c it's hard to say but uh on my 19 caves i've virtually had a free run right around from the time i started it rode around there i was just changing through the gears running up 50 kilometers an hour occasionally uh, stopping at a stop sign but apart from that I wasn't tied up for 20, 30 seconds or a minute at one particular spot before I could take off. It just doesn't happen here, so I don't have to experience that. So hopefully you got a little bit out of this idea of how, how quick these um, bikes can warm up. And that's why I take a really easy running approach to it and just go out and do, you know, 10, 15, 20 kilometres in the early stages and then bring it back and just let it cool down. So... Once again, hope you found this interesting. If you do, come back. There'll be more tests on this bike and we'll go from there.